are these people? Vanessa, for those who don't know you, you've done extensive work on what is happening in Syria. We recently read an article on CIA and MI6 involvement in the infiltration of Palestine and Syria using coffee shops, WhatsApp groups, and other online orgs that cut out like InfoStrat. Can you speak on your experiences dealing with and documenting that? Uh, you mean the organization Incostrat is involved in the spying in Palestine? One of, you know, that's one of many, right? That's not very surprising. Yeah. Yeah, um, one of many. I mean, actually, it, it, it's a little bit weird because Incostrat is pretty much now a bit of a shell company. It, it was established by uh, Emma LeMessurier and Paul Tilly, from memory. I'm digging back in my hard drive now. Uh, Tilly was former British military intelligence, as was James LeMessure, who established, of course, the famous CIA MI6 white helmets embedded with Al Qaeda in Syria from 2013 onwards, um, producing the chemical weapon propaganda to vilify the Syrian government and to basically enable um, and sustain uh, foreign intervention during the regime change war. Um, and and Incostrat was established um, basically to run PR for the armed groups, uh, the illegal armed groups in Syria, which of course included one of the named groups that they were supposed to be providing this PR for was Jaish al-Islam, uh, based predominantly in eastern Ghouta in Damascus, the eastern suburbs of Damascus, and who conducted some of the worst uh, atrocities against Syrian civilians, particularly, of course, against um, you know non-compliant uh, extremist Islamist uh, ideologues, uh, and that included the caging of uh, Shia civilians, the massacre in 2013 in the industrial city of Adra, to the north of uh, Damascus. Um, and so basically, Inkistrat was responsible for presenting Jaish al-Islam as one of these um, freedom-loving, democratic-promoting groups inside mm. Syria trying to topple the bad dictator uh, Bashar al-Assad. Um, right. And then uh, Emma LeMessure, basically then, uh, I think it was in 2018, she became part of the management team at Mayday Rescue, which was a spin-off basically from the White Helmets to funnel um, the European, the US and the UK funds to the White Helmets. In other words, to give the government in the UK plausible deniability, because at that point uh, the image of the White Helmets was, was getting a little bit kind of tarnished, let's say, mm. after they participated in a number of summary executions and beheadings and, and crimes again against uh, Syrian civilians. Um, and from there, basically, she again ran the, the regime change war PR, but from within made a um, rescue. So Incostrat has a history of, of these kind of operations, but w where it's interesting for me is Incostrat is effectively a bit of a shell company now, as I said because the majority of the employees went on to a company called IWN2, so IN2, which gotcha. was, is, is run by Paul Tilly, but is also um, staffed by many of the former employees of Incostrat. And Incostrat, the last time I looked, I think it's, it's got le less than six employees, but it's still received, and it's based in the US, it hasn't, to my knowledge, um, filed, um, you know, a FARA uh, foreign uh, agent, agent uh, relations. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the US because I checked that about a year ago, um, and it's still receiving significant funding from the UK regime. And the really interesting thing is when I started to dig into this because the UK government, for people to know, it produces every month a kind of um, spreadsheet of everyone it funds over 25,000 pounds. Now, funnily enough, when I started to really dig into Incostrat, guess what? They stopped publishing this spreadsheet. And when we <laughs> chased them up for an answer as to why this, you know, 
publicly available spreadsheet suddenly was no longer publicly available, we were told that um, they were working on the formatting um, and that basic, effectively it's not going to be available ever again because we're not going to give you the information to basically shoot ourselves in the foot. Right. That's what it came down. Uh, I mean, similar stuff in Iran too, right? Color Revolution, very similar companies working in there. Um, oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, this it's an entire complex. I mean, we've just seen it in, in Venezuela. Um, and the interesting thing, though, in Israel, I mean, I would say the British intelligence operations are probably way more active in uh, Lebanon, especially right now with the threat of escalation between uh, the Zionist entity and uh, Hezbollah and the various resistance factions in the south of Lebanon. Um, but we know, for example, that, that many of the same elements that were involved in the destabilization efforts in Syria have been involved for a long time um, in infiltrating Lebanese military um, intelligence, security, government sectors um, in preparation potentially for this kind of escalation. We know that NATO troops are now embedded in Tripoli in the north of Lebanon ostensibly to enable the evacuation of citizens. But I mean, you know, we, we've heard these kind of stories quite a few times previously. Yeah. But in Israel itself, I mean, you've got the um, you know, the, the IOF, the Israeli, uh, I always want to say offense forces, but the occupation forces um, who have their own spy unit, the 8200 um, unit, from which has been spawned multiple surveillance and AI and cyber tech companies that are now kind of tentacling out into um, UK cyber surveillance and so on, right. health sectors, education sectors, and the same in the US. I mean, Oracle, for example, which is one of the biggest storage platforms, um, is a Zionist uh, backed organization established by Unit 8200 um, former operatives, 100% um, supportive of Israel. It doesn't employ anyone that doesn't support Israel and gets rid of anyone that, that doesn't. Um, and, and that's an organization which is effectively mining your personal data. 